He said, I welcome everyone to our workers training tonight. And I pray that the training will do good in every life in Jesus' name. How many of us went out uh, yesterday for that uh, mass evangelism? I knew you will raise up your hand. The Lord bless you. Amen. Prosper the work in your hand. Amen. How many of you went to the um, special deeper life uh, garment yesterday? What do you need to wear today so I can see you in that uh, wonderful dress? It was good. I said it was good. Don't throw it away. You're still going to wear it another time. And um, our sisters were making a special one for you that will fit you well, well, well. And uh, so link up with your uh, group, uh, pastors and pastors. And um, I wish I could go out with you and just come through, you know, come over here. Uh, what do you gather before you go out? Okay, I'll ask um, the moderator. One day I will surprise you. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for the happy, joyful, faithful, loyal people doing your work. And we pray that this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We're asking Lord tonight to open our eyes to see once again. And we pray that as we see, we'll get and launch into the deep in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and the authority of the name of Jesus will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. We will run, we will not be weary. We will walk, we will not faint. And this work will continue as we march on in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can do better than that. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. And I read to you from verse 8. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. As you look at that verse of scripture, that's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself talking to His own disciples, speaking to His own disciples that they were about to receive power, the kind of power they had never received before, even though they had gone out two by two. And they had seen some wonderful things, but something greater was coming. Come to Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father, underline that word promise, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. As we look at that verse, you see the instruction. You see the command, you see the commission that the Lord Jesus gave to his own disciples. And since he gave it to them, he's giving it to us as well. Look at that. It says, Behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. The Holy Ghost was going to come upon them, going to overshadow them. And going to overwhelm them and going to surround them was going to uh, be around them uh, like an envelope and deal them, envelope them. And it says, But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. That means uh, you have to wait. And it says, Until, until. And this is not saying I prayed for, you know, one day and uh, so I give up. For two days I give up. For one week I give up. It says, Until ye be in Endowed, endowed, enveloped, immersed, surrounded with power from on high. And uh, he told them that, and then Acts of the Apostles uh, kind of um, uh, tells us in a wider way and in a broad, broader way. We're coming back to Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them. 
And you understand, the people were reading about, they already, they have received the Holy Ghost and they have done the work and uh, that you find in the Acts of the Apostles. It's not for us. It's not for you. I said it's not for you. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. If you need to understand the word tarry, this is what it means. But which for the promise of the Father, which he says, ye have heard of me. For John truly really baptized with water. How did John do that? He immersed them in water. He submerged them in water. He brought them into the water and lowered them there. And the water surrounded them. And the water covered them. And it says, but ye shall be baptized in the same way. You'll be immersed. In the same way, you'll be submerged. In the same way, you'll be surrounded. In the same way, you'll be totally be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. In the same way, ye shall be baptized of the Holy Ghost. And not many days hence. It says, keep on praying, keep on tarrying, and keep on expecting it will come. Amen. But ye shall receive power, verse 8. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Underline the word both. You see, there are some people, and they think we should do all the work in Jerusalem before we can go to Samaria. The, the way they read their Bible is, ye shall be baptized, or ye shall receive power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me first in Jerusalem, after that in Judea, after that in Samaria, after that until the uttermost part unto the uttermost part of the earth if you read your bible like that it means that everybody must have been evangelized in jerusalem before you can ever step out to go to judea and then everybody must have been evangelized in judea before you can go to samaria and then everybody must have been evangelized in uh, samaria before you go to the uttermost part of the earth if you think like that Nobody will ever get saved outside Jerusalem. You know why? As you evangelize in Jerusalem and you think that you have covered the whole of Jerusalem. You understand Jerusalem was the capital city. Not only that, a cosmopolitan city. Not only that, it was a city that got all the people coming from other parts of, a, of that a nation. And so if you say in Jerusalem and say first in Jerusalem... When you think you've covered everywhere in Jerusalem, other people have come in that have not had. And so you start all over again and you're reaching those people. When you finish with those people, you discover other people have traveled, they have migrated into Jerusalem. And so if you read your Bible like first in Jerusalem, when we finish that, before we can go to any other place, uh, those other places will never reach them. But you know what Jesus said? He said, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth, which means at the same time, simultaneously, what is going on in Jerusalem is going on in Judea. And what is going on there is going on in Samaria. What is going on there unto the uttermost part of the earth. The power will come. Yeah. And as the power comes, then everywhere we go, we're not going to wait until this area is totally evangelized before we go to another place. At the same time, both here and there, we're going to do the work in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, you know what Jesus told them? He said, Tarry. He said, Wait. And their question is, Did they wait? Look at verse 14. This all continued with one accord in prayer. That's what he told them to do. That's what they did. And supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with the uh, brethren. Uh, look up here for a moment. You see Mary, the mother of Jesus there. And you're wondering, how about that? You see, many people do not understand that the baptism in the Holy Ghost is deeper than whatever experience they got when they were saved or when they were sanctified. You see, the uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she said, 
how will I, how will I uh, give back to this son of God that we're talking about? The angel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And it is through the power of the Holy Ghost she got uh, conceived and then add Jesus the Son of God without any interaction, without any intimacy with Joseph the Osman. And now you cannot say she's not God, a bit of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. But now this one is different, this one is higher. This one is greater. Even though she had that experience at the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ, this baptism in the Holy Ghost was greater. You see, there are people that will say, when I was saved, I know how I used to pray. When I was sanctified, I know how I used to pray. So when the Holy Ghost comes, what's greater than that? I've got this already. I've got this already. A mighty power in the baptism will come upon your life like you never had before you are going to have a new experience in jesus name look at verse 15 there and it says in those days peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about 120. we're coming to acts chapter 2 verse 39. acts chapter 2 we're reading from verse 39. For the promise is unto you. What promise is that? The promise of the Father. Jesus Christ already used that language in Luke chapter 24. I sent the promise of my Father upon you. And then again in Acts chapter 1, it says, I send the promise of the Father upon you. And he's using the same language. Peter is using the same language here. The language of promise, it says, for the promise is unto you. And to your children, to your converts, to those that will come after you. And to all, how many people? And to all that are far off, that is the gentle people that will get converted as we're going to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. The people in the uttermost part of the earth, those are the Gentiles, those are the people that are far off. And Jesus said that Holy Ghost baptism is also for them that are at the uttermost part of the earth. You know, there are some people, if you read their books, they say, yes, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But it was for those apostles. It was for the early church. And once, uh, you know, the Bible has been written, and, we have, and we, have now, we have now the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there's no baptism in the Holy Ghost anymore. But Jesus said, that you receive power so that you'll keep on witnessing you know, until the end of the world. And here it says, the promise is unto you. And it's to your children. And it's unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As long as he's still calling people to salvation and is calling people to forgiveness and is calling people to experience in the lord conversion this holy ghost baptism is still relevant today is still available today and if you have not been baptized in the holy spirit you'll be baptized tonight in jesus name if you have been baptized you'll be refreshed you'll be renewed there'll be a new outpouring of the holy ghost upon your life in jesus name there are three with the three p's we're looking at i didn't say three points i said three p's we're looking at p p and p the promise the power the purpose of pentecost the promise the power the purpose of pentecost that's what we are talking about tonight as we're going to look into the scriptures the promise of the father the endowment of power from on high the baptism with the holy ghost is one of the great promises from god to the believer you can claim this promise and that promise and that other promise but the greatest the greatest when you are filled when you are overwhelmed when you are enveloped when you are endured with the power of the holy ghost joel declared it like a prophecy john the baptist gave it in his preaching 
and lord jesus christ presented it as promise it is the promise of indwelling for the indwelling of the holy spirit it is the promise of the partnership in the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit comes to partner with you. So that whatever load you are carrying is a partner. And whatever journey you are traveling is a partner. And whatever uh, kind of assignment you have is a partner. That's what the Lord Jesus said. He will be your helper, the paraclete. Not only that, it is for outpouring, outpouring. This is different from giving you a cup of water. This is uh, different from giving you a glass of water. It's different from giving you even a bucket of water. It is to bring you to the ocean the ocean of the river of the holy spirit and to immerse you inside that so that all around you all above you all upon you the holy ghost power is there it is also referred to as endowment the endowment of power he induces us he energizes us he injects us he kind of infiltrates our whole heart and our whole system and we're totally endured we're empowered it is also anointing and the anointing that breaks every yoke you will possess that anointing and it is the assistance of the holy ghost that's the promise that i will assist you whatever the assignment and whatever the duty and whatever the responsibility he will assist you you'll have the assistance of the holy ghost in jesus name just talking about the promise about the power the power of the holy ghost is made available to every believer the power of the holy ghost is made available to every believer and then it tells us it is for life it is for life all the challenges of life that may come upon you the holy ghost is there and that power will lift you up not only that it is for ministry for ministry the power of the holy ghost is to make us minister in such a dynamic way because in fact it's called the dynamite and because it's called the dynamite he assists us empowers us energizes us for ministry and also it is for ministry in spiritual warfare and there are many things uh, that will confront a preacher of the world in spiritual warfare against principalities and powers this is the power that comes to envelope us and it is for edification edification he edifies us what does that mean you know sometimes uh, your uh, the battery of your telephone will go down and then if somebody calls you you cannot uh, hear any sound if you try to call anybody you can you cannot make any call at all but when you charge it that word edify means to charge. You charge your spiritual battery. You know, when things are getting dull, when it appears that, you know, the road is too tiresome for you, tiring for you, when it appears that, you know, the challenges of ministry, you couldn't do more than you've done yesterday. You cannot climb higher. You cannot go higher. You cannot see further. Then you charge your battery. And the Holy Ghost is there to charge our spiritual battery. That's why we refer to him as the one that comes to edify us. It is also for revelation. He comes to reveal the Father to us more And comes to reveal Jesus Christ to us more And he comes to reveal unto us the needs of the people The state of the people The standing of the people And the way we're able, we're going to reach them In bringing conviction upon them It is for comfort You know sometimes we go through challenges and difficulties And we need comfort and We're wondering why is this like that And there's no answer Why is the road so rough like this and there is a well, there's no way of knowing why is it i'm under this i'm under that and this commitment is about to set him and then the holy ghost will take over your life and then he begins to interpret to you and he begins to comfort you and your tears are dried up 
like tonight all your tears are dried up in jesus name and then it is for spiritual strength spiritual strength and when somebody is you know it's like uh, you're eating the food spiritual food but the food is not digesting it is not passing nutrients into your body it is not giving you energy you are anemic and then you cannot run you cannot walk if the wind of adversity blows a little bit you're so lean and you're so light it's like it will blow you down but now the holy ghost comes i said the holy ghost comes and then spiritual strength is given to you whatever wind may blow and whatever waves may come you will stand i'm looking at a champion tonight i'm looking at a conqueror tonight and whatever the wind may be you will stand in jesus name the same power the same power think about it the same power that christ had on earth is promised to all the saints and all the servants in his kingdom to do the same works that jesus did think about that that the same power of the holy ghost that jesus had that same holy ghost power is available for you my brother it's available for you my sister and when this power comes upon you you will go places you have never gone you will touch lives you have never touched you will reach places you have never reached and it's going to begin tonight i said it's going to begin tonight because the power the power that pentecostal power is still the same today it's still the same today and thank god is for you i said thank god is for you number one the promise number two the power number three the purpose the purpose the purpose of the baptism with the holy ghost is clearly revealed and clearly stated in scripture what's the purpose why are we receiving the holy spirit number one to endure with power to work to endure with power to work and we sometimes will say we lack uh, workers uh, from tonight we will not lack workers when the power comes upon you you are endued with power to work number two it's to inflame with fire and fervency because you know when, when john the baptist when he told the people and he said there is one greater than i am and he's here in our midst you cannot recognize him he said he will baptize you with the holy ghost and ways tell me fire and when you have fire burning on the inside of you in your spirit in your soul in your heart in your bones in your brain fire on the inside you'll be fervent for the lord coldness will vanish away lukewarmness will vanish away lethargy will vanish away laziness will vanish away tiredness will vanish away the Holy Ghost comes to inflame us with fire and fervency. Number three, to empower us for effective witnessing. Empower. Somebody tell me, empower. empower. He empowers us for effective witnessing and for harvesting and for church planting. Number four is to envision us for greater ministry and kingdom service you see the way some people work it's like they are blind they are blind to the need they are blind of the field they are blind of the possibilities of evangelism they are blind of the need around them but when the holy ghost comes he envisions us where there's no vision the people perish but when the holy ghost comes and then he enlightens us and he envisions us things are going to be different will be different in your life tonight Amen. number five to enlighten and guide us into all truth and you know sometimes uh, you've been a christian for 10 years and then you hear something i've never had that since i became a christian you've been a christian for 20 years and then you hear something and it's in the world it's in the black and white of the bible you can see it on the surface there i've never seen that why am i just hearing that today the holy ghost comes it will enlighten you and guide you into all truth 
Number six, the Holy Ghost comes and is to engraving the image and the stamp and the nature of heaven in our spirit. It's like a superscription that he puts the stamp of heaven upon your soul and upon your spirit. And you are more heavenly conscious than you are earthly conscious. You are heavenly minded and you are no more worldly, earthly minded because the image of heaven, the superscription of heaven, the stamp of heaven is engraving upon your spirit by the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Number seven is to enlarge our coast. Your coast will be enlarged. I said your coast will be enlarged. Uh, you, know, you know sometimes, uh, look up here, when you, when you have a pole and then you tie a goat, nobody will tie you down. I said you, nobody will tie you down. And then you tie a goat, the length of the rope of that a goat from the pole to the neck. That goat is free to move, but just moving around. There is some, once there is a place outside the length of that rope, the goat cannot get there. How many people are like that? They are tied to a particular pole. And whatever they do, they're just uh, doing it in that circle. They cannot go beyond that. There's no enlargement for them. There's no increase for them. The Holy Ghost comes. I said the Holy Ghost comes. And that rope that ties you and limits you is broken. It is caught. And now you are free. Somebody there I said, now I am free. And then you go beyond and you're no more limited because the Holy Ghost comes and there's an enlargement of your coast, an enlargement of your ministry, an enlargement of your duty, an enlargement of the possibilities of God in your life in Jesus' name. It's to enlarge our coast, to reproduce the life and the ministry of Christ fully. The message tonight, the promise, the power, and the purpose of Pentecost. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purposelessness of absentees from Pentecost. The purposelessness, that is, aimlessness. That means the limit, the limit of the people that are absent from Pentecost. The purposelessness of absentees from Pentecost. Number two, the preparation for anointing at Pentecost. The preparation for anointing at Pentecost. You are getting ready. Somebody there said you are getting ready. Then number three, the power and the authority through Pentecost. The power and the authority through Pentecost. Tell me number one there. Tell me out aloud. Have you ever thought about it? Those who are absent from Pentecost. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're reading from verse 6. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6, it, this gives us an insight as to how many people actually heard when Jesus said, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 6. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once after that he has been talking about when jesus rose from the dead peter saw him james saw him and then he said after that more than 500 brethren believers they saw him at once and then all those 500 people more than 500 they heard and he told them you must not depart from Jerusalem, but you must tarry. You must wait in Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. How many of them actually waited? Tell me out aloud. 120. 
500 minus 120 that's 380 more than 380 brethren were absent they were absent more than double were absent because when you think of 120 120 times 2 tell me 240 120 times 3 tell me 360 380 more than three times of the people in uh, uh, the upper room uh, more than three 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 times of them were absent absentees were those people and it's only the 120 people that waited that the Holy Ghost came upon the purposelessness of absentees from Pentecost look at uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is not only those uh, three eighty people or other people they make that like their habit they make that like their manner as the manner of some is they forsake the assembling of ourselves together wait for the power wait for pentecost tarry and wait and pray until the holy ghost power will come and as the manner of some is they are absent they are not there they don't have any purpose they don't have any desire they don't have any thirst they don't have any passion they don't have any vision and because they're visionless because they are purposeless because they are aimless they were absent what's the excuse why were they absent and why are some perhaps absent from here today as we're talking about the power coming upon the sanctified believers look at matthew chapter 22 verse 5 matthew chapter 22 verse 5 but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise that, that's why they were absent they made light of the commission they made light of the commandment they made light of the instruction they made light of what jesus told them tarry tarry wait for the power of the holy ghost because as truly john baptized with water ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days ends they couldn't wait for just a few days we're not talking of a months and years just for a few days and then the power something that never happened before was going to happen you will not be absent uh, look at uh, mark chapter 4 mark chapter 4 i'm reading here from verse 15 mark chapter 4 verse 15 it tells us in mark chapter 4 verse 15 it says and these are they by the way by the wayside where the word is sown they are the word they are the message of jesus but when they heard satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts you see there are people like that jesus said tarry 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 wait in jerusalem until underline that word on, until 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 he be baptized in the holy ghost and immediately they heard it went in one ear it came out the other ear they didn't think about that they didn't plan on that they didn't wait because satan took that instruction away from their heart how many things have we heard and then we enjoy it when we hear and we say this is wonderful this is great and yet we do not act on it this one you will act on this one power will come in your life energy will come and the strength to march on will come in your life in jesus name look at verse 19 of that mark chapter 4 verse 19 it says in verse 19 and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the laws for all further things entering in took the word and it becomes unfruitful you see there are people uh, they heard just like uh, you know just like those people had more than 380 they didn't wait absentees absentees i will not be an absentee tell me i will not be an absentee 
uh, you see some people when the bible study comes to your turn to come to bagada they are absentees and they choose the meeting to come to bagada they are absentees and the thursday and the, you know you have heard the announcement of your thursday miracle revival hour i don't know what you call what you call it in your mind i call it thursday miracle revival hour i said i call it thursday miracle revival hour the fire of heaven will come in your soul and you know everything shakeable will be shaking out of you in jesus name all the dust and all the cobweb that you know you, you know sometimes uh, when you when you put uh, you know an instrument somewhere and the thing is just there and it, and you don't know what is happening when you come to pick it up after many days you see a lot of dust on it you know why because it's just there and then you look at cobweb all over you know it's uh, that's like uh, somebody's i'm a christian i'm a christian and it's just in there it's just saying there, there's no movement there's no action there's no action activity and then all the dust on him all the cobweb turns the miracle revival hour all those things will be swept away from your life cobwebs will leave your life dim sight will leave your eyes and all that is my blood pressure is my kidney turns the miracle revival hour miracle somebody shout miracle but you know absentees they are absent miracle revival hour comes and it's a new day it's a new don't new dispensation but they are absent i will not be absent and then the special sunday service that this uh, this time we're having that uh, even people are coming from different places and they say i want to be there i want to be there and then somebody in lagos here will say uh, are we going all the way to bagada that's a new place i said that's a new place i said that's a new place and we con you contributed don't raise up your hand if you didn't contribute you contributed and then that thing is now there and it is there for you i said it is there for you and so every special sunday service thank god you will be there and uh, you know but you know absentees they never think about anything because it says in verse 19 uh, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the laws for other things entering in choke the world and it becomes unfruitful you see they make light of the opportunities they have and they make light of the good things uh, coming upon them uh, you'll not make light of your privilege and opportunity in jesus name uh, can i tell you why some people make life make light of those things and they don't understand uh, look at uh, look at genesis chapter 25 genesis chapter 25 uh, i'm reading from verse 34 genesis chapter 25 uh, we're looking at a uh, verse uh, 34 it says in verse 34 it says uh, I, I think jacob gave esau bread and uh, pottage of lentils and uh, he did eat and drink and he rose up and he went his way thus Esau despised his birthright sometimes it is the belly like Esau the belly is more important than the baptism in the Holy Ghost sometimes it's uh, you know a little convenience a little comfort that's more important to them than their birthright nobody will take your birthright away from you uh, we're looking at uh, judges chapter 18 judges chapter 18 uh, i'm reading here from verse 7 judges chapter 18 uh, and we're reading from verse 7 this is the reason why some people are absentees absentees i will not be an absentee i said i will not be an absentee uh, let me hear the sisters voices uh -huh, uh -huh. you'll not be an absentee in jesus name you know sometimes something is going on i will say this is women's fellowship oh women's fellowship it's uh, just a uh, women you don't understand god is going to raise up people like uh, deborah he's going to raise up people like esther and he's going to raise up people like Cruz. and that these uh, women when the holy ghost comes upon you is he coming upon the women when that holy ghost comes you'll never be the same again in jesus name 
uh, there are many challenges uh, you know that face uh, women and when you come in that uh, women's fellowship if you are not an absentee you will not be an absentee i said i will not be an absentee and then our brothers you know maybe i should i tell you uh, new uh, is something is being planned now men's fellowship i said men's fellowship i can't hear the voice of champions men's fellowship we're planning it right this one is not i was there before no you are not there before you are not there before the one you attended that was you know that time this one men's fellowship somebody help me shout men's fellowship you will not be an absentee in jesus name a new thing is happening but you know when people hear this absentees absentees we're going to, we're going to have hundred percent attendance yeah. men's fellowship women's fellowship use me to you know i'm telling you they from this time on now this is the beginning of another month yeah. i was soon going to finish up for the year for the rest of this year i said for the rest of this year you will see what you have never seen you will hear what you have never heard you will not be an absentee in jesus name look at judges look at judges judges chapter 18 and i'm reading from verse 7 judges chapter 18 verse 7 then the five men departed and came to leech and saw the people that were there in how they dwelt careless how they lived careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secured, and it says that might put them, and it said there was no magistrate that might put uh, in the land that might put them to shame in anything. No leader, they didn't listen to any leader, no magistrate, no judge no director no direction and it says they get, they were far from the sidonians and they had no business with any man can you think of that they were just at ease and they were careless and these uh, 380 brethren they were like that they had no relationship with peter no relationship with john uh, the beloved no relationship with james nobody to question them were you there why were you not there they were just absent and they were missing you will not be missing in jesus name we're coming to jeremiah jeremiah absentees absentees i thank god that spirit of absentee god has taken it away from me long long time ago i don't know about you I said I don't know about you. Jeremiah chapter 12, Jeremiah chapter 48, chapter 48. Look at verse look at verse 11. Moab has been at ease from his youth. Moab has been at ease from his youth to move out of here, out of the house, and then to go to that place, the upper room, where the outpouring of the Holy Ghost is coming. Moab had been at ease from the days of his youth. And there are some people like that to even make an effort and to even get up and to get to the bus station and to get to the place they need to get to so that they will get to the place of that miracle revival time for them their arch ease it will not happen to you jude chapter one jude chapter one i'm reading from verse 19 jude chapter one and we're reading from verse 19 it says that these be they who separate themselves sensual not having the spirit absentees not having the spirit in fact they look warm because they cannot care about anything these uh, 380 out of 500 brethren were absent from uh, the upper room they saw the risen lord and the risen lord who rose from the dead he challenged them and he said tarry they heard his voice and they heard his command and yet they will be absent from today you'll not be absent anymore you have any friend a brother a sister 
you have you know any worker that ought to be in the workers meeting and they're always giving his skills always upset you'll go the fire coming you now will spread to them and then you go and touch them they will not be absent anymore those who are absent are purposeless number one number two they're aimless they don't have any aim they don't have any goal it's like the jaws there number three they're thoughtless thoughtless because jesus said the holy ghost will come upon you power from on high will come upon you they didn't think about it number four they were careless they're just careless with information they were careless with revelation they were careless with opportunity number five they were fruitless fruitless because since they didn't have the power they didn't have the anointing they were fruitless number six they were faithless faithless they didn't understand if i leave that merchandise if i leave that market if i leave that farmer if i leave that uh, whatever it is and i go to the upper room what i get in the upper room will make for what i might have lost in the market the lord will give you prosperity in jesus name number seven they were visionless they were visionless and where there's no vision the people perish and because of being a visionless that's why they were absent number eight they were mindless mindless they were not mindful of what jesus had said and the mind of christ was not in them they were not one with the holy ghost they were not one with the savior they were not one with the redeemer they were mindless I pray that will not happen to you. Amen. You will receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Power will come upon your life. Endowment to power. Anointing with power. Authority with power will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You have come today. You will not come in vain. There will be an addition in your life. Amen. A multiplication in your life. Amen. And you will run a race you have never run faster than you have ever run it will happen to you in jesus name point number two now point number two is the preparation for anointing at pentecost preparation for anointing at pentecost i'm coming to luke chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 49 luke chapter 24 verse 49 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you upon who upon upon you upon who you know you'll be turned to another man you'll be turned to another woman as you wait upon the lord and you receive this power it says behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until 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 ye be endued with power from on high look at john chapter 7 john chapter 7 we're reading from verse 37 john chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man says any thirsty person there if any man says any thirsty sister there if anyone thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water rivers in the plural your life will be refreshed your life will not be dry again and then it says for but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified now he is glorified i said jesus is now glorified and is pouring out the power the anointing of the holy ghost upon those who are thirsty yours will happen tonight Isaiah chapter 44 Isaiah chapter 44 we're reading from verse 3 Isaiah chapter 44 I'm reading from verse 3 and I will pour and I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground and I will pour my spirit what kind of spirit 
God's own spirit. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And then we come to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine when he in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. But be filled with the Spirit. But, say it, be filled with the Spirit. But, say it aloud. Be filled with the Spirit. Can I ask you a question? Here is a vessel. And there is something that already filled the vessel. And you want to fill that vessel with another liquid that is more important, more precious, more useful, more valuable, more priceless than the liquid in the vessel. But the vessel is already filled up with that other ordinary liquid. And you want to fill this same vessel with a more precious liquid. What are you going to do to that liquid already inside? Tell me now. Can I hear you? Point away. We are the vessels. You are the vessel. Where is he? Where is she? You are there. God will locate you tonight. There's the vessel, and it is filled up already. We, we must empty the vessel. That's why Elisha told that woman. You read the story in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verses 1 to 7. He said, what do you have at home? And he said, your handmaid has just a little oil at home. He said, okay, go and borrow from your neighbors. What kind of vessels? Empty vessels, not a few. And then take those empty vessels, shut yourself up in your chamber, and then pour. There's an outpouring tonight. And then pour. And then pour. And so she went. What kind of vessel she, did she get? Empty vessels, not a few. And then her sons were there. Your son will see. Your daughter will see. And then to the empty vessel, she poured, she poured, she poured, and they were all filled. From that side to this side, they were all filled. From that place to this place, they were all filled. In feeling tonight, at pouring tonight. But you know, we must empty the vessel before we can fill it up. Number one, emptied of self. Emptied of self. Look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 3. James chapter 4 verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that she may consume meat upon your loss. That's self. We empty our vessel of self. There's no self, no selfish consideration. There's no selfish aspiration. There's no selfish uh, kind of upliftment. We are emptied of self. Number two, we are emptied of inward, inbred sin. You see, there are people outside were clean. Outwardly were righteous, but inside, inside, inside. And when that inbred sin is there, when that inward sin is there, we need to be emptied of that inward sin. It will be done. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'm reading from verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. You will be clean. Whether Satan likes it or not, he wants to bring defilement upon you, he wants to bring death upon you, Satan will fail. Yeah. On your behalf, Satan will fail. Yeah. And anybody that wants to bring death and defilement on you, they will fail in Jesus' name. Yeah. The Almighty God will sprinkle clean water upon you. Yeah. 
and ye shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from your all your idols will i cleanse you a new heart a new heart who oh, is going to have this one a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you i will take away that's the empty that's the empty in. i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh number one emptied of self number two emptied of inward inbred sin from the heart number three empty of self-satisfaction self-satisfaction i'm all right the way i am i don't need the power of the holy ghost i know the bible i'm a deeper life member and i was you know sometimes some time ago i spoke in tongues i'm all right now i don't need any extra thing a multiplication is coming in your life addition is coming in your life but we must be emptied of self-satisfaction we're looking at proverbs proverbs chapter 14 and we're reading from verse 14 proverbs chapter 14 verse 14 the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself from himself that is all that self-satisfaction i'm all right i'm okay all that will go away from your heart and as you're emptying emptied of self emptied of inbred sin emptied of self-satisfaction something will happen tonight number four emptied of anger and bitterness emptied of anger and bitterness look at uh, ephesians chapter four ephesians chapter four in verse 13 and grieve not the holy spirit of god Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has sealed unto the day of redemption. But let and let all bitterness and wrath and tell me anger. Somebody shout anger. anger. Say anger. anger. How can you be? You want to be a blessing to the rest of the world and you're angry with the world. You want to be a blessing to a brother and to a sister and you're angry with the brother and with the sister. You are the agent, you are the carrier of the peace of God, of the healing of God. You are the carrier of the blessing of God unto the brother, unto the sister and you're angry at them. How will you be a good agent that will transfer blessing into their lives? You are a carrier of the salvation of the Lord, of the gospel, the good news of the Lord unto all the people your neighbors and then you're angry at them how can you carry the good thing to them you will not be angry again Amen. anger be gone Amen. bitterness go away Amen. you're going to love people in jesus name Amen. we must be and we must be emptied of anger and bitterness that's why it says let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and then it goes on to say after talking about clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with what all malice and be kind one to another i see kind people here today tender-hearted i see tender people here today forgiving one another i see forgiveness here today even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you i thought you say amen, amen. now in james chapter 3 we must be emptied number five of poison poison and look at the vessel the vessel is there and you have poisonous uh, liquid inside that uh, vessel and you want to pour in precious precious ointment and precious uh, liquid you must empty that vessel of poison and then uh, when you place that vessel something new will come look at uh, james chapter 5 james chapter 5 uh, i'm reading from verse 6 and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity and uh, so is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell for every every kind of bees and of birds and of serpents and of uh, things uh, in the sea is tame but 
the but uh, and has been tamed but the tongue can no man tame it's an unruly evil tell me tell me out aloud full of deadly poison you see you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost that deadly poison uh, that is in the vessel that is coming out of the heart and coming in your tongue abusing people looking down people belittling people slandering people lying against people and all that everything that is come because it says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh full of deadly poison all that poison today it's emptied in jesus name and now number six emptied of hypocrisy we must empty the heart, empty the mind of all hypocrisy. Look at uh, Acts chapter 5. Uh, Acts chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 3. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. And uh, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie unto the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the prize? You see, Ananias, the heart was filled with hypocrisy. He brought us uh, something. Is this all? Is this every yes, that's everything. And it wasn't everything, and it is hypocrisy. And you know, if you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost be filled with the holy ghost you must be emptied emptied of hypocrisy number seven emptied of unbelief emptied of unbelief if unbelief is there you're going to empty that unbelief away today and the holy ghost will come in look at mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 i'm reading here from verse 14 mark chapter 16 verse 14 after watch he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and he upbraided them, he rebuked them, he chastised them, he corrected them with their um, upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Come to Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter 4, we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6. Seeing therefore, it remaineth that some must enter in. Enter in. Enter into the experience you will enter tonight. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because, because of unbelief look at verse 11 let us labor therefore to enter into that race let lest any man fall after the same manner of unbelief we must empty out the unbelief emptied of self emptied of inbred sin in what sin in the heart emptied of self-satisfaction emptied of anger and bitterness emptied of poison emptied of hypocrisy emptied of unbelief and the holy ghost is ready to come in in fact it's nearer than you thought i said it's nearer than you thought as you open the door he will come in and he comes in with power he comes in with anointing he comes in with the glory of heaven we're coming to point number three now the power and authority through pentecost the power and the authority through Pentecost. The time has come for your power. For the anointing and the authority. The power and the authority through the anointing. We're coming to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye, make it personal, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be and ye shall be my witnesses ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth somebody there will say amen, amen. luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 reading from verse 1 remember the two things power and authority then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them and he gave them 
and those uh, disciples are not here the disciples who are there now they are the people in front of me they are the people who are hearing the message today power authority anointing unction possibilities exploits in your life in jesus name then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of god and to heal the sick it will happen we're coming to acts chapter 6 acts chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 5 acts chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 5 it says and the same pleased the whole multitude and they chose Stephen. i am chosen i said i am chosen and he chose Stephen. and then and it says in that verse 5 a man full of faith and of the holy ghost full of faith and of the holy ghost come to verse 8 and Stephen, full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people your time has come i said your time has come full of power full of the holy ghost great wonders and great miracles will follow look at verse 15 and all that search in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel you didn't say amen to that yeah. the weakness of man is being taken away yeah. and the radiance of angels being imparted upon your life in jesus name yeah. and look at chapter 9 acts chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 17 chapter 9 we're reading from verse 17 it says in verse 17 and ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand on him said brother Saul brother uh, what's your name there sister what's your name there I can't hear your name let Ananias hear your name brother Saul it says the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest as sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. That power will be upon you today. Power without authority cannot have legitimate manifestation. Somebody says, I have power, I have power. But you don't have for authority to operate. There will be no legitimate manifestation. On the other hand, authority without power will be limited in expression and performance. In the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we receive power. We receive authority. We receive anointing. We receive divine ability. We have power and ability, one, to preach with conviction. From today, the power will come upon your life. You will preach with conviction. To pray with signs following. Don't say again that miracles will not come through you. And don't say, I will refer you to grow pastor. I will refer you to pastor. I will refer you to the reference is coming to you. And when you pray for the sick in the name of Jesus, they'll be healed in Jesus' name. You will pray with signs following. Number three, to pursue the heavenly vision without growing cold or growing old or growing lukewarm. Heavenly vision upon your life. Number four, you will have the power to honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Number five, you have the power to persevere in persecution without quitting, without giving up. And you know, some people, a little problem is enough. I'm going back home. That will be cut out from your mouth. I am tired. I cannot do any other thing again. That is cut out of your mouth. But now, the power to move on. Somebody there, I'm moving on. I'm forging on. 
and I'm going forward you will go forward in Jesus name Amen. the power to wrestle and conquer principalities and powers Amen. you will conquer Amen. you will overcome the very power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life will not leave you the way you are. All weakness is taken away in Jesus' name. The power to obey Christ, whatever the cause, to obey Christ to the uttermost. I said you'll obey Christ to the uttermost. Do you know that power is coming upon you right now? I said that power is coming upon you right now. Where is the one saying amen there? I said, where is the one saying amen there? Yeah. Let your hand indicate, let your voice indicate. Yeah. Because your time has come. Yeah. You shall receive power. Yeah. I will receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon me. And I will be a witness. Yeah. Both in Jerusalem. Yeah. And in Judea. Yeah. And in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth i will run i will not fade i will walk i will not be weary i will do the work of god coldness is gone lethargy is gone lukewarmness is gone rise up and receive rise up and receive rise up and receive i will receive power 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 after the really ghost has come upon me and i will be a witness unto the lord jesus and both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth raise the volume of your prayer unto god power is coming upon your life today